Or do you think about this? I mean, what would happen? We get caught, and we have to ask ourselves the question, why don't we bleed to death? Actually, I've got a friend who can explain this a whole lot better than I do, and so I'm going to have her explain this for you. I cut my finger this morning, and it's bleeding. But if I put this bandaid on, it'll stop in a while. Did you ever wonder how it happens? I mean, does blood just stop? Because that's what it's supposed to do? Why doesn't our blood clot before we get it cut? I guess we just die then, because all our blood would harden up and stop flowing. Did you ever wonder? Did you ever wonder why? Blood clotting is a very complex process involving thousands and millions of triggers that have to act just perfectly with one another to create the final outcome. Let me see if I can tell you how this works. First, you get a little cut like mine. Imagine you're in my bloodstream. There's a bunch of traffic going on, and pretend you're floating around with a kajillion other red blood cells, all with oxygen backpacks. Everything slows down when you get near the cut. This is called vascular constriction. In short, your body limits the flow near the cut because it knows something is wrong. And of course, you feel pain. So, a protein in your body called fibrinogen arrives on scene. Fibrinogen is primarily responsible for stimulating platelet clumping. Thrombin essentially cuts off the ends of the fibrinogen. Platelets clump by binding to collagen. Upon activation, platelets release adenosine 5-diphosphate, ADP and TXA2, which activate additional platelets, serotonin, phospholipids, liver proteins, and other important proteins for the coagulation cascade. Activated platelets change their shape to accommodate the formation of the plug. Oh, sorry, I digress. Anywho, this complex thing called the Stewart factor converts prothrombin to thrombin, thereby converting fibrinogen to fibrin. By the way, the Stewart factor wasn't active until it was activated by the Christmas factor. Okay, there's a lot more to this process, like this goes there, and binding, receptin, who knows what. It's very complicated. But the net result is a clot. Stops the bleeding, cut heals, clot dissolves, you're on your way. Isn't that neat? Isn't this an amazing system? Now, how long do you suppose that we took in our evolutionary process before we finally got the clotting system right? How long do you suppose we could last without a clotting system? Not very long. And especially the many generations it would take for us somehow to figure out all those factors do you know what happens when one of those doesn't work? Hemophilia is a result of one of those factors not working. What an incredible thing that God has given to us in blood clotting, which we probably just ignore because we expect it to happen. 